me once again, and it's Kakuch once again. <laughs> so we had a very nice talk from uh, Jakub concerning the horizontal um, pattern of, of the site, and now we're going to go somewhat more deep to the vertical uh, profiles, and I will I will uh, compare the site uh, to the other ones on the on the Daniel Tisa interview. Uh, I will just shortly. Um, Emphasize some points from the introduction, but not go into detail again because it's, it's getting boring about Kakuch. So we have the Watya culture, we already know, and we have the different types of, uh, of, of, uh, of settlements within the central area of the, of the Carpathian Basin during the Middle Bronze Age. And as we have mentioned previously, we have, uh, we have uh, different types of settlement, uh, settlements on the western bank and on the eastern bank of the Danube. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, on the western bank we have these hilltop settlements, mostly on the on the ridge of the Lust, uh, Lust territory of the Mazelfeld, uh, which are uh, believed to be uh, uh, parts of the of the network and probably at least parts of these settlements uh, were inhabited by the elites of these societies. And they are uh, strikingly there. You can see them. They are very interesting, and and a lot of archaeological and geoarchaeological and many other research have been done in these areas, especially at Sassambatta and in the Shoshkut region, and recently uh, some work uh, in the Perkata region as well. And uh, on the other side, uh, physically on the other side, on the eastern bank of the Danube, we have the Great Hungarian Plain, and we have sandy material. We have sand fluvio alien sand, uh, sand ridges there, and as you can see, the sites are not as interesting, at least uh, concerning the exoterrestrial features, but we have more things uh, beyond beyond our food. And um, a micro-regional study has been going on for a while, which is uh, 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 in, in this geographical uh, region, and these are the sites that are so to say, under the microscope. So the line about Tabas Söller two from Kakuch, very close to each other, and of course, uh, uh, the already mentioned Kakuch Turia, which is uh, really in the focus of an international cooperation. And I'm also going to talk more about this one uh, at, uh, this, in this presentation. So before anything started out at Kakuch, we uh, had the opportunity to plan uh, a coring series. We called it a, a, a mapping coring or a mapping uh, of, the, of the site. We had this uh, very nice uh, maps, this geophysical prospection map, and then we designed, uh, designed a, a coring series focusing on, uh, uh, on the key points, the key parts of the settlement. First of all, we wanted to have some sort of information about the rough stratigraphy, so not the micro areas, just, just to have some information how it could have look, how it looks like beneath our uh, uh, feet. And therefore, we designed two cross-section quarry uh, uh, profiles, one from, one from the north to the south, the other one from the east to the west. And as you can see, it is uh, consciously uh, uh, expanding the uh, ditches, the boundary, or the boundary of the site, which is believed to be the ditches, because we wanted to see what is the sedimentological, the geographical, and the geomorphological environment uh, of this uh, site, which is embedded here in this area. And then we have uh, the ditches or the hydrological part of the of the site, which can be uh, separated to inner and outer ditches. And there is a one interesting uh, cistern-like uh, feature in the in the edge of the site, which is. Uh, either a retention tank or a cistern or, or something like that. And we wanted to see, uh, can this be somehow supported by the geo, uh, 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 archaeological observations of the corings that were done, uh, done here. Before, before we go into detail, it must be noted that the, all of these sites, if you look at this map, which <coughs> shows uh, the environmental conditions uh, before the 19th century's uh, river regulations, that all this territory is really affected, was really affected by water. All of the sites are located next to water bodies, but probably on, um, on places on higher elevation ridges, uh, sand ridges, uh, so that the uh, groundwater movements do not affect the life of the settlement. And this is a very important uh, uh, circumstance in terms of the hydrological, uh, hydrological um, arrangements and, and system of all of these sites. And it's probably linked to how the ditches were formed and, uh, and, um, and uh, planned and structured. So, first we, we are looking at the north uh, 
cotton profile, which is extending the uh, scorching the entire side. And I would like to draw your attention to this main part of the of the uh, area. You can see the red line is the uh, shows where these uh, uh, profiles. And on the profile sections, you can see that there are there are these uh, complex sediment uh, 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 layers layer uh, layers with a very high intensity of dull and charcoal and other uh, 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 anthropogenic material content. As you can see, if we expand to the, to the, to the uh, north and to the south of the site, uh, it, it disappears. We only find a, an ex situ uh, anthropogenic uh, accumulation of sediments in the, in the very lower, in the lower part of the, of the uh, sand ridge, which is probably, which was probably moved uh, with the erosion from both this ridge and that ridge into this, into this valley, which, which is here. What we see here, or what is the conclusion based on this, or the, one of the conclusions, that we do not see any, at least in these profiles, we do not see any uh, land use or uh, territory use uh, beyond the boundaries, beyond the boundaries of the um, ditches. And then to the ditches, uh, the outer ditch was mapped with corings placed uh, two meters from each other. It's kind of a dense and high resolution, uh, <coughs> high resolution coring technique to map uh, map the map the uh, uh, stratigraphy of the of the of this uh, 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 ditch section. And um, if we somehow connect these uh, very similar uh, uh, layers. We can find the bottom line here. We can find the possibly the bottom line of the once existed uh, ditch, which, which gives a very nice U shape. And then we have an infill material full of uh, full of uh, anthropogenic particles, especially dow and charcoal and all the other debris, which was either moved, washed into this ditch during the settlement life or after the abandonment of the site. Which is, what is interesting is that we have a ceiling layer here, which is supposed to serve as the water retention layer. But if we have a look at the data, especially uh, in terms of uh, soil texture, we see that there is uh, only loam and loamy uh, uh, clay uh, texture, which is not the best uh, for re re uh, retaining water in this, uh, in this uh, depths uh, in, under this ditch. Therefore, I would say that um, probably this ditch was not always underwater. It had a very, very strong periodical mo uh, movement of the water of the water table. It's also confusing uh, that the infill material uh, uh, shows a very, very low uh, organic matter input. If uh, you remember the, the phosphate uh, concentration at Borsodivanka, then we have really nothing here. So compared to that which is strange because we would expect to have higher organic material inputs in this, uh, in this uh, infill, infill culture layer. The inner ditch was also mapped in a similar way, so uh, corings placed very close to each other. And we have a different situation here, because if we, we start to draw our lines, then we have, uh, we have uh, the top of the culture layer. We have here the possible bottom of the ditch, but we see that we don't we don't find really we cannot really draw uh, or set up the uh, uh, the field because the so-called K1 culture layer, which is present all over the site, it was shown on the first uh, cross section uh, in the uh, uh, main sir, main uh, nucleus of the site, is basically above this. <coughs> two possible answers or two possible theories uh, uh, arise here. Either uh, after the abandonment of the of the ditch, the material, the debris material from the set occupation area was washed into the ditch, or it's extreme, especially from the archaeological point of view, the site gradually uh, extended itself and moved towards moved towards the the other compartments or the other com other uh, sections and basically uh, occupied the territory, the area of the ditch. Therefore, we find the occupation material uh, on. Uh, the top of the ditch itself. Again, we have a, a water sealing, uh, water retention a layer here downstairs, oh, yeah. below, sorry, <laughs> below, where we have higher uh, uh, coefficient, uh, texture coefficient uh, uh, results, which is more or less uh, explaining that the water could have been retained here uh, easily. And then we have an, a more incre or an increasing uh, amount of uh, organic material 
uh, uh, appearing in the in the infill infill uh, layer of the of this inner ditch, which seems to be in place at least uh, compared to the uh, untouched or the natural soil profiles and the, and the fossil PPM measurements that were conducted there. And then to the retention tank or the possible uh, cistern of the site, which is a uh, uh, more or less a mystery, but it could have served as some sort of junction of the ditches, and uh, and could have served as a as a manager of the of the hydrology of the en entire site. What you can see here is that we have almost a three and a half meter deep uh, infill material, really like a really like a well or something like that, which is uh, which is only located uh, in this only can only be found in this very small area uh, of this uh, of this feature. Looking at again some of the some of the data. Oh, sorry. We see here that we are moving into the, to the clay part, to the clay uh, uh, coefficient, coefficient um, uh, zone. So it's 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 kind of an explanation again that water could really be retained there and it could be used for hydrological purposes. So we have Kakuch uh, Turia Megut, which is really really in the center of uh, the ex, uh, of the research uh, in the last couple of re uh, years. And then we have two other sites, which look more or less similar in terms of, this horizon, in terms of their horizontal uh, 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 structure. At Dumshut, we have, uh, again, more ditches and more, uh, and more uh, uh, clusters, but uh, we don't see the entire site because it's based, it is stuck on a, on a, on a Dumshut channel at the moment. And then we have a very simple, only what we want nucleus, uh, the Dabash Sölök Jada Pusta site. Uh, this ongoing research is focusing now on if they are simil only similar in the horizontal way or, or also their vertical structure and uh, um, the distribution of the different layers is also similar or not. We only have pre preliminary results at the moment because it's an, an ongoing uh, work. We don't have these very nice drawings at, at, at present. But what we see is that especially uh, the allocation and the vertical vertical distribution of the different types of uh, soil and sediment layers, the modern soil and beneath that the culture layer sealed by the modern soil is present at Dömsöd Lányvár. We have a very similar uh, very similar uh, uh, sedimentological circumstance in the in the ditches and a similar depths also, which which again links this to the Kakuch uh, Kakuch site, and of course we have the same at the uh, Dabasdorfi which. Uh, is a more simple and less complicated version, maybe, of Kakuch, who knows. Thank you for your kind attention.